tried sharing. Yeah, so some of you might have gone through the material which was asynchronous online already. And uh, my, my talk was on collaborative learning and an experience we already had with moving students from working in groups first asynchronously and then having an assessed synchronous session, which was happening with Blackboard Collaborate. Now, to start with at the beginning of the year, the whole design of the module in which we implemented this was keeping in mind group work and teamwork and trying to learn from each other, learning from feedback, reflecting on the feedback. But now with the whole time, a new opportunity came along and we got together online in the end to check on what we've done. One struggle which I had over many years when trying to make people collaborate is to get the right type of platform to get students communicating. And this is a typical sort of answer that they are giving you when you're asking what sort of platforms do they prefer to use in order to work as a team. All that after giving them information and setting up for them students, seminar group areas online, that's pretty much what comes up always. They're using Facebook, they're using Google Docs to create collaborative documents. I personally believe it's nothing bad about having Google Docs, for example, if you want to write a joint report. It's actually great. It gives you alternative facilities, it's quite fancy, and students are taking up the, the skills very quickly. They learn from each other. But my main objective was really to try and move them onto our university platforms. So that's why I'm trying to look into what exactly is available already on Blackboard. And here we are. If you do have a Blackboard module, you can set up what I call seminar study groups because I've created groups of students or you can call them teams within which they were working throughout the semester. You can do that literally at the click of a button. When you're setting this up, you can look into the different facilities for having groups. And here we are. So you can have bulk actions and it gives you the option to create what is called smart groups and also to include various tools for collaboration. Just as an illustration, the tools which we had available this year based on the seminars which already had been assigned to students in the timetable, they had discussion boards, they had email for their group, they could exchange files, we could see those files as well, other students could read them, give peer feedback, they also could use Collaborate Ultra, which pretty much means they could have the sort of sessions we do have now, jointly. And indeed, that's exactly what we used ultimately as well for their final assessment. Just to give you an example, what they've done, for example, in one of the groups. So if you're looking at the tools, they've been using as well the discussion board, again, very infrequently. Students do prefer, even so they have this set up, we have guided them on doing those. They still prefer to do this outside of the Blackboard platform. Yet, here is where they had, for example, at the beginning of the term, they had a presentation outline, there it was. But what I think was more interesting is not just that we could get them talking here, but at the end of having a joint report, which they actually have managed to upload within their seminar platforms, and I just show you where they are. So we just look into a file exchange. That's where all the students can see the other groups work. By clicking onto this group work, it means that their peers are able as well to read it. What it also means is that their peers can come with questions. And that's why after assessing their group report, we did have a live session. So we moved to a synchronous way of assessing this. How did we do that? We were using the Collaborate within the platform on Blackboard. There, you can set up sessions for students to practice. And I'll just give you an example. If they use it for team practice, you can go back in there and you see at any point who has actually, who has linked into the system. You can see the report, who was there, for how many minutes, what exactly did they do? I'm not gonna click here, I just give you an indication that everything is actually being recorded. So what we did then, we did have at the end of the year and Q&A session in which students 
defended their finding in the research report. They were assessed both, both for the question they were putting as well as for the answers. There is a record as well of everything that happened in that session because Blackboard Ultra is also recording that. Now, I'd like to go outside this framework for next year and use it as well for other discussion boards, just to give you an indication of what discussion boards can do, because I've seen some questions coming as well in the chat earlier on. For example, I need to stop sharing this, and I'm gonna go for a minute and show you what we are doing actually in there. And this will be here. So if you are using Blackboard, in fact, you can use a graded discussion as well. I think this is the one feature I would like to use instead of, for example, preparing for a seminar to which students just come and sit in and listen to our proposed answers. I would like them to discuss questions for what would have been normal seminars. Now they might become workshops. Try to discuss them in advance. What they would do, they would put first, they would indicate their, their, their answers or their thoughts. Somebody else in the group would try and answer back or have some comments, let's say, for example, on Tony's contribution. All these are automatically recorded in Blackboard. And that's why I do like the idea of trying to bring in the university platform into this discussion board and into the engagement. So it tells us how many posts, for example, Tony had. If you go into the grade of that person, you can go as well into their individual contributions. You see what they said. This is the system's example, not my own. You can also give further feedback. Yes, there will be some intervention from us at the end, and this can be used towards assessment. But throughout the term, we can ask, for example, that students do have, if it would be for eight session, let's say they do have both a comment and a question or an answer to somebody else, we can trigger the marking or the assessment where there are a minimum, let's say, for example, of 10 contributions. So that can be nicely put back into the system. Now, just one thing before I'm, I'm going. So this is pretty much what I've been using and what I think to use in, in, in the future. Just one thoughts about uh, what, what students are thinking about this type of, uh, of, of new ways of engaging. I've been following them this year to see how it worked for them. When I told, I told them to tell us what was most challenging, it was working with people. And then I asked them, how was it to prepare for this question and answer session online, which was synchronous? Pretty much the main word which came up there was nothing was challenging. So that's really reassuring for me. Yes, they did have their fears to start with that perhaps this is going to be a challenging experience. But in the end, everybody seemed to have enjoyed it. And some of the comments from the students were really encouraging. Some of those who would normally not contribute a lot, they are saying that now they participated. And it just starts with a very long blurb where a student says that I can learn more by being with others as opposed to being an individual. This is something I would not have done outside this module. After this Q&A session, I just wished I had made more effort to connect with the group. Yes, assessment did help, and I do strongly recommend to link it, hence, for example, this discussion boards with their study groups as well as with the final assessment. Fantastic. Thank you, Lily and John. So 